Hello, Dr. G here from naturalfoodsdiet.org. I just read a report this past week about another warning by the FDA for a serious side effect from a drug. And this time, it was a commonly used class of antibiotics called the fluoroquinolones. Included in this class are Leviquin, Cipro, Avalox, Floxin, and Factin. And I'm giving you the brand names because it's the drug companies that come up with these brand names. And they develop these drugs on the common Me Too paradigm. That's where one drug is produced and is, and is successful. So the other drug companies take that same basic structure and add a little methyl group or something and make a copycat drug. And it's a big shortcut to getting a successful drug. This strategy pays off really well for the drug companies and greatly reduces costs. And think statins here. They're all copycat drugs that even today are raking in billions of dollars. More and more, the fluoroquinolone antibiotics are being used to treat common infectious conditions like sinus infections, ear infections, and bronchitis. And that's because bacteria are developing resistance to many of the commonly used antibiotics. Now we knew already that these drugs have black box warnings for damaging tendons through the degradation of collagen and they also cause permanent nerve damage and peripheral neuropathy. Now there were reports of many Achilles tendon ruptures associated with the fluoroquinolone use which led to the black box warning. Collagen is a structural protein that's contained throughout the body so it's not so surprising that a study has found that this class of antibiotics seems to cause a serious weakness of another structure that's typically under a lot of stress. And that's the aorta. That's the main artery that comes out of the heart going up and down. A recent study reported that aortic aneurysms, that's a bubble that can develop in the artery, is two times more common if you've had a recent course of one of these antibiotics. Aortic aneurysms can lead to catastrophic rupture, which is usually a death sentence. These aneurysms were seen to occur as soon as 60 days after taking the antibiotic. So the FDA has ordered another black box warning for this risk, and that's the highest level of warning before a drug is pulled off the market. I find in my practice that antibiotics seem to be needed more and more, as my patients often have immune system dysfunction. So infections often get out of control. Of course, we know there's other risks with taking antibiotics besides these ones specific to the fluoroquinolones. They can kill off normal flora in our gut, and this allows a pathogenic bacteria like Clostridium difficile to get going, and this too can be fatal. Reducing the diversity of our gut flora appears to be a big problem. Numerous studies show that the more diverse one's gastrointestinal microbiome, the healthier the person is. A few years ago, I read an editorial, an editorial in the journal Nature by a researcher named Martin Blaster, and he stated that their lab and other labs have suggested that the impact of antibiotics on the gut, gut flora is permanent. And now we have studies linking changes in gut flora to diseases like obesity, type 1 and type 2 diabetes, inflammatory bowel disease, allergies, asthma, and many more. So what's the alternative to an antibiotic? Well, your immune system needs energy to be effective. How do you get that energy? One way is to have all the components that are needed to create energy in the mitochondria, and that includes vitamins and minerals and food substrates. But humans also obtain energy through sunlight and by grounding to the Earth's surface. Both of these sources of energy have been severely disrupted in the recent human past, and this disruption continues to accelerate and, in my opinion, is damaging our health, including our immune system. Our modern environment is also damaging our sleep, both through artificial light exposure, 
which destroys our melatonin production, which is also important for the immune system. And when we eat processed foods or any food really in the late evening. You see, the body repairs itself during sleep through a house cleaning process called autophagy, which will be disrupted if sleep is disrupted or if you've eaten food too close to bedtime, especially if it was sugary or starchy food. Morning sun exposure that's in the retina, directly from the retina to the sun, allows the pituitary gland to function normally to get our hormones right for optimal immunity. Midday sun gives us UVB radiation on our skin, and this creates important immune molecules like sulfate of vitamin D and sulfated cholesterol. Modern medicine and our modern indoor living has caused us to miss the sun, and this is to our peril. But the sun can't do its magic if the body is low in the omega-3 fatty acid DHA. That's because DHA quantum tunnels electricity from the eyes to the brain to get the hormone response. The, the standard American diet is sorely deficient in DHA and therefore it's impossible to have a strong immune system when you're eating the American diet. So sadly, antibiotics are needed despite the horrible collateral damage. I had a patient that told me his specialist put him on Leviquin for his bronchitis. He knew it was strong, he knew it was expensive, and he seemed so proud that such a powerful antibiotic was needed. He wore it as a badge of honor. But remember, if you take this drug, you run the risk of irreversibly damaging your structure and your friendly gut flora both of which are indispensable for good health. So the risky antibiotic should be saved for that life or death situation. This is Dr. G, thanks for watching. And if you like this, please subscribe.